Hello, and welcome to the GRACE podcast series. My name is Denise Brock, and I am the Operations Director for the Global Resource for Advancing Cancer Education, or GRACE. In this podcast series, we interview patients, advocates, and healthcare professionals to provide the most updated information for our community and to highlight important issues facing those dealing with a cancer diagnosis. We hope you find this information valuable. For questions or comments, please visit us at cancergrace.org. Hi, I'm Dr. Jack West. I'm Associate Clinical Professor in Medical Oncology at the City of Hope Comprehensive Cancer Center and also the founder and president of GRACE, Global Resource for Advancing Cancer Education. I'm very happy to be joined today for an ASCO Highlights presentation in the field of lung cancer with two of my friends and colleagues from other parts of the country who are lung cancer experts with uh, some different perspectives and we're going to go through some of the key presentations and uh, talk about what we think this means for patients. Uh, so uh, first I have uh, Dr. Helena Yu, who is a medical oncologist at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center and Dr. David Spiegel, who is chief scientific officer and director of the lung cancer program at the Sarah Cannon Cancer Center in Nashville, Tennessee. Thanks guys for joining. One of the other advances in general in lung cancer and also in some other tumor types has been the identification of new targets. And I would say HER2 as a mutation is not a new one. It's just one that has teased us for a couple of decades at least. We've known about it. We know that these mutations are present in around two to 4% of patients with lung cancer, but we haven't had a very effective treatment for it. We've had some treatments that we've borrowed from breast cancer and tried to apply in lung cancer, but without great, great results. We've uh, generally had only about uh, one in four or one in three at most of our patients with responses and they don't tend to last an extremely long time. Now this is a novel antibody drug conjugate, which essentially means that it's an, an antibody uh, injected, it's, it's infused IV, and it's a combination of, uh, a, uh, of a homing antibody that, that goes to the HER2 to, to, uh, protein and is paired with a, uh, a chemotherapy agent. And so this is uh, called trastuzumab deruxtecan. It's a derivative of trastuzumab, which is a, a drug that's been used in breast cancer for many years. Um, and it's, this agent is now marketed as NHER2 and used in breast cancer that is positive for HER2, uh, which is common in breast cancer. This was studied in a relatively small study of uh, 42 patients, uh, but looked encouraging uh, with a response rate of nearly one in three patients showing a, a good tumor shrinkage. Uh, most of these were not complete shrinkage, but a, a lot of improvement. Just to show in the image in the lower uh, left, the bars going downward reflect the shrinkage of tumor and every bar is an individual patient. And so what you can see is that there are no patients in which we see the bar going up, no patients in which tumor is growing and the majority of them are going down and some going down quite a bit. So uh, encouraging also you could see in the bottom of the table that the progression free survival, which is the, uh, the median, the point where half the patients have had the cancer begin to grow again is over a year. It's a year and two months and overall a very encouraging result, at least to my eye. Um, I'm interested in your thoughts, uh, David, why don't I just start with you about whether, yeah, sure. uh, you know, obviously with 42 patients, this isn't going to become commercially available now, but are you optimistic that this is 
going to translate to what makes HER2 uh, a, a, a target we need to find and treat now? I mean, it's, it's the first real advance in this setting that doesn't make you very sick. So I, you know, there is toxicity here, but, you know, as you know, this is taking off in breast cancer and a new standard of care. And, um, you know, and so I'm excited about this early development. So you, you nicely point out high rates of nausea, even, even low grade, and that's concerning. And then some GI toxicity. So, right. You know, I also you, wanted to it, point out, they did have some uh, lung problems. Yeah, ILD. ILD uh, yeah, with, with so the, interstitial yeah. lung disease. Uh, how concerning is that to you? And uh, of note, this was a higher dose than is used in breast cancer. And so I wonder yeah, that's if right. dial down. Yeah, that, that's right. And so that's where this is right now. You know, you love seeing everybody you enroll on this get some benefit. And so it's, it's tracking along other targeted strategies that are now approved in lung cancer. But, but as you point out, you know, can you find these patients easily and then treat them in a way that's meaningful where they don't get sick and maybe it's a dose change. So I think this is another agent that could find its way into lung cancer, but not based on these data alone. There's got to be more work in this space and it's, it's happening. I mean, pivotal trials are in progress right now. Helena, what are your thoughts? Are you, Completely encouraged. How concerned are you about the side effect profile? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing to say is, as you mentioned, Jack, we've we've known about these targets for a long time, but it's taken a while for drug development to catch up. So I think for HER2, you know, we saw sort of kind of semi-promising results with TDM1 and then kind of incremental significant uh, sort of bettering um, with, with this agent. Um, and it's similar to what we saw with RET positive lung cancer with cabozatinib. And then when you get a really good drug that's developed like selpercatinib, um, you know, you see these kind of um, increasing response rates and, and duration of response. So I think that's encouraging. We know the targets and we're kind of developing newer and newer drugs that are better. Um, I think that, you know, these antibody drug conjugates are a brand new class of drugs for lung cancer. Um, you know, as Jack, uh, as David said, you know, this is a drug that's approved in breast cancer, but we're learning more about these. I'm really excited about that technology because I think it is sort of a, you know, a completely new drug class that's sort of combining chemotherapy and targeted therapy and, and hopefully capturing sort of the best of both. Um, but I think the toxicity sort of, again, reminds us this is chemotherapy, right? There's a, a, a chemotherapy payload here that has kind of the, the common things that you see with chemotherapy. Um, having um, uh, a similar, having experience with some of the other ADCs that have, that are similar to this, I think, um, yeah, the nausea is a significant problem, but I think it is one that we've learned with chemotherapy that if you give the right pre-medications and the right supportive medicines, I think is, is, is definitely manageable. And even on this study, the, the number of people that came off for toxicity um, with the exception of interstitial lung disease was, um, was quite low. So I think it can be managed. Okay, good. Well, I look forward to seeing more and, and uh, you know, adding to our pantheon of of agents, of targets that we have a great drug for. I think for me, when, you, when you're when you using treatments for EGFR and ALK as your pace setter with a response rate of 70 or 80%, that's what you'd love to see for newer targets. And so 20, 30% in the past 10, you know, 10 years ago, that might've impressed us. We're really hoping for a better fit, a, more of a key to the lock. And, and um, dramatic benefits as well as good tolerability. Thank you again for joining us. This podcast was made possible by the generosity of sponsorship from our friends at Lilly, Novartis, Decada, AstraZeneca, and Exalexis. Please like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter Send us feedback, share your story, donate and visit us for more information at cancergrace.org. Thank you for listening.